Shalom, shalom and welcome. Welcome to White Rose Family. My name is Simonai, and these are the words I'm compelled to present before a set apart awakening nation. This is the 79th installment of White Rose Family, a series of messages that are critical to facing the realities of end times as they unfold before our very eyes. In this installment, my brothers and sisters, I want to bring your attention to vibrations and sounds as it relates to the trumpet, the shofar. My brothers and sisters, if you're tuning in for the first time, I speak often of how each of the seven major feast times have, should I say has, a purpose, a purpose that contributes towards giving us the tools that we can use as guided by the spirit of Yahushua to vet, to examine the one in the mirror as well as those we come in contact with. Let me ask you, O Yashara, are you tired of being burnt, misled? Are you tired and disappointed for time you've invested in a community, a camp, a fellowship, or a group because you was seduced by the scripture of do not forsake the assembly not realizing that you must develop a relationship with Yahushua first in a way that you're able to discern between good and evil before you jump into any community, camp, or group. If they're not lifting up Yahushua HaMashiach, if they're flattering you with words of fruit or safety or guns or numbers, if it's a camp that's... Flattering you with uniforms. If it's a group that's flattering you with words that they have taken from scripture, but they are not lifting up the spirit and the person of Yahushua Mashiach, something is wrong. So I say to you, who would step into a situation to repair themselves or be repaired or to repair or fix or correct anything without the appropriate tools? The scriptures are brought before us as the Almighty Father's toolbox that have been tampered with by man in many ways, shapes, and form. However, man cannot manipulate or control the spirit of the Almighty Father, and it is he, through his set-apart spirit, sent in Yahushua's name, that gives us understanding of how the scriptures can come alive and direct our footsteps, guide us, and contribute towards our learning, teachings, and practices. If you look at different ones, I go through step by step from Passover to unleavened bread to first fruits to harvest to trumpets to atonement to tabernacle. I want to bring your attention to this one here is akin to the Feast of Trumpets. You see, my brothers and sisters, in a gathering, when the Most High speaks of trumpets, is that not, have we given thought to what is happening? It is a sound. It is a vibration to our ears. It is a vibration to our heart. It is a vibration to our minds to act. Act in a way where we proclaim and make known, where we rejoice over all that the Almighty Father is doing. There are times of rejoicing. There are times to proclaim a time of action. There are times to proclaim judgment. It's a time to make known the vengeance and wrath that is promised by the Almighty Father. With that said, before I get further into this, let me read the following. Warning and disclaimer. The information contained in White Rose family represent instructions and warnings to individuals who believe they are drawn by the Almighty Creator Yahuwah to Yahushua Mashiach. I'm referencing John 6.44. The content presented centers around end time realities. Please be advised this site is not intended for children under 16 years of age to be compliant with various media platforms. By continuing forward, you agree to hold seminar harmless of any influence and or actions that arise as a result of watching, listening, and or viewing the content presented. The views expressed do not reflect the owners, management, and or shareholders of this media platform. Please note, I am not affiliated with anyone or organization with similar names. 
With that said, my brothers and sisters, vibrations and sounds. By now, we are fully aware that end times are here. There's a growing number of individuals who are struggling with rest and peace and sleep in some cases as uncertainty ramps up. There are so many positions on end time prophecy, so many different teachings regarding worshiping and obeying the Almighty Father. And I call this situation noise, the great noise of end times. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, out of the noise comes vibrations and sounds that affect our emotions, our feelings, that, af that affects how we govern ourselves. But to you, O set apart Yasharal, I want you to interpret all the noise as a result of the sofa, shofar, as a result of the trumpet sounding out loud. That judgment has begun at the house of Yahuwah first. Make known that corrections and reproof are coming before the house of Yahuwah. And I submit to you, O Yasharal, the vibrations and sounds will prove to come to the leaders, the mores, the teachers, the pastors, the shepherds, the bishops, those who call themselves priests, brothers and sisters, Know that the house of Yahuwah will be judged first, and I am compelled to believe that we will see a judgment that will bring about correction among the leadership to prepare the body, the set-apart children of Yahuwah, for the great gathering, for the emergence of the 144,000 in the great multitude. Vibrations and sounds. So in spite of all the false teachings, the false preachings and the mistakes, to you who are set apart, know this. We will discover how to navigate through all the noise and respond to the vibrations and sounds that are set apart, delivered to us by he who is the Almighty One. Let me continue, for Yasharal. Allow me to begin with some scriptures. In Leviticus 23rd chapter, in Leviticus 23rd chapter, this is the chapter of the feast times. It says, And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yashorah, saying, In the seventh moon, on the first day of the new moon, you have a rest and a remembrance of Torah. Torah is sounds, trumpets, my brothers and sisters. A set apart gathering. You do no so vile work. And you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. My brothers and sisters, this speaks of the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets. It is the fifth of the set apart feast, my brothers and sisters. And in this feast, we are to make sounds of the shofar, to blow the trumpet. It is a time to rejoice. It is a time to make known what the Almighty Father is doing amongst his people. It is a time to proclaim all that he has done. It is a time to recognize that judgment is an ongoing thing. Some despise and reject judgment, my brothers and sisters. But judgment is a method of bringing correction. Please note, trumpets are used to bring vibrations and sounds. I cannot stress it enough. What are you feeling? What are your emotions? What is your spirit saying to you? For I have no doubt that within each of us who are of the body of Yasharal, set apart Yasharal, there's a stirring going on within as we witness conditions deteriorate on this planet. From global warming to climate change, from disease, plagues, from pestilence, from food shortages, from wars, from civil unrest to economic instability. Our spirits are stern and hungry to identify what the spirit of Yahuwah is saying to us. Let us open our ears, my brothers and sisters. Let us respond to the vibrations and sounds that are coming from the Almighty Father. Know this, that vibrations and sounds come with purpose. We will discover that such purpose results with set apart actions that include rejoicing, proclaiming deliverance, 
to make it known his vengeance and wrath. It would be wise, O Yasharal, to learn the importance of discernment and receive what the spirit of Yahushua reveals and require to be made known. Yasharal, O Yasharal. I want you to remember the life in a passage that I've spoken of before, and I am compelled to mention it again. Proverbs 3, 7 states, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah and turn away from evil. You see, the fear of Yahuwah will cause us to pause, will bring us to a degree of caution in what we say and what we do. But if we're trying to foster and embrace and encourage, and if we fuel excuses, if we look over excuses, if we look at excuses as a license to disobey the Almighty Father, we will find much regret. Wisdom, my brothers and sisters, come from fearing Yahuwah, for he will give us the knowledge, the wisdom, the direction. It will come to us directly in spirit or through a brother or a sister. If necessary, the stones will cry out. As it is written, Proverbs 4, 19 to 27. I mention this often, my brothers and sisters. I cannot stress enough how as end times ramp up, we must be mindful of this passage. The way of the wrong is like darkness. They do not know at what they stumble. You see, it's letting us know if you're walking in wickedness and evil, if you have fostered in the ways of the wrong, you are in darkness. And if you are so intoxicated by wrong, in that darkness, you will indeed stumble. It goes on to say, my son, listen to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. This requires discerning the life, the living presence, and believing that you are receiving information from the Almighty Father. It is through studying. It is through wise counsel. It is through practice that we learn the voice of the Almighty Father. Will we stumble and fall? Will we make a mistake at times? Yes, but let us not make the fear of making a mistake cause us not to test the spirit that stirs within and weigh the scriptures to see if the spirit stirring within line up with what we have studied as the life has been brought from the scriptures to our minds, to our beings. He says, my son, listen to my words, incline your ears to the saints. Let them not depart from your eyes. Guard them in the midst of your heart. For they are the life of those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the sources of life. Turn away from you a crooked mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look forward and your eyelids look straight before you. My brothers and sisters, Conditions are worsening. There is more ahead of us than what's behind us. If you're looking for, at it from a natural and practical, then the days in these earthen vessel, vessels, there is less. But if you look at it in the reality of the way, the way we walk and talk and speak as we pursue improved worship and obedience to the Almighty Father, if we look at it as servants, children of the Almighty Father, life ever, everlasting and proof of that is much greater than what's behind us, is what I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters. We will see deaths. We will not, we will find, we will not be able to attend all the funerals. We will not be able to attend all the grief-stricken meetings. We will not be able to respond to the needs of those who are not called to fulfill the final exodus. We will find that there will be times where we are positioned in places where we cannot, I won't say we cannot, where we are instructed to look forward, walk in, step into the things that are expected from the Almighty Father. There is so much work to be done, my brothers and sisters. He says here in the 26 and 27 verse of Proverbs 4th chapter, 426 and 27. Consider the path of your feet and all your ways are established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Turn your foot away from evil. 
There are those who will say it's simple. I want to present to you that it's as simple as left and right. And I say to you, my brothers and sisters, do not fall for this thing of, are you a liberal or conservative? Are you going to the left or the right? Do not fall for the rules that saying that you must always go left or if you go right, you can never go wrong. Lean into what the spirit of Yahushua is saying, for he will guide our footsteps in these end times, telling us when to go left, when to go right, when to go forward, when to step back. We can do it, O Yasharal, and we will, those who will be known as the children of obedience. My brothers and sisters, end times are here. They're here. We have moved beyond types and shadows. End times will prove that there will be vibrations and sounds ordering us to act. You see, some of the actions are actions of preparedness, and some of the actions are actions that begin to work to bring cohesion, to bring unity, to bring togetherness, my brothers and sisters. I say I will ask this frequent, and I am compelled to do so continuously. Are you satisfied with your moray, your teacher, your leader, your shepherd, your community head? Are they instructing you on what to do in the event of their demise? For some mores, some community heads, some pastors, some preachers, some priests, some very influential individuals, will soon be removed for they are obstacles in the way of the coming together. Some will get extremely sick and ill and become physically weak. Some will become mentally disabled. Some will be removed from death. And some will weaken for a moment and yield to correctness and reproof. They will yield to the corrections that go forth, and they will demonstrate what it is to yield, to ask for forgiveness, what it is to repent. They will demonstrate what it is to get under the blood of the Lamb of Yusha, and in doing so, they will be renewed. Some will be renewed and be stronger leaders than ever before, and some will be renewed but placed in a different position as Joshua all come together to fulfill what is expected. Vibrations and sound. Let the noise of the shofar, let the vibrations cause us to gird up in the strength of the inward man by the power and might of Yahushua HaMashiach and begin to recognize what is being ordered of us and begin to act. Yashara, oh Yashara. We don't know what the spirit of Yusha will tell us to do in some cases. But when he tell us, we must learn to discern and respond. And make no mistake, the plan of Yahuwah will be successful, is being successful. It will, his words, his living words, from the scriptures to the things that are not written, that line up with scriptures, his actions will come to be. The realities of what we face in end times are going to bring the most challenging that we've ever could have imagined. Yashara, oh Yashara. Expectations are rising regarding 144,000 in great multitude. Yes, people are getting anxious. Some may not be saying it, some are. Some may not even be aware. And those who are blinded by the false pretense of a pre-tribulation rapture, that belief is slowly and gradually eroding. Consider Revelation 7, 4. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of the tribes of the children of Yasharal. Many people are deceived to think that only the 144,000 was sealed. They stopped there. But this is only the fourth verse, or this is only a position in the scriptures. But there was more said. And for the sake of time, I wanted you to drop down to verse 9 in the 7th chapter. 
In addition to the 144,000, the writer says, after this, I looked and saw a great crowd, which no one was able to count out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb dressed in white robes and palm branches in their hands. These two, I submit to you, are sealed with the seal of the Almighty Father. Sealed meaning we will witness the sealed ones of Yahuwah fulfill all that is written. We will witness the 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Yashara as mentioned in Revelation 7 chapter, as well as a great multitude. And in all of the 144,000 great multitude, it is still a remnant. For those of you who use the word remnant a lot, it's still a remnant when you compare it, when you compare it to the population on this planet, my brothers and sisters. It is still a remnant, but it will indeed be a great multitude. He goes on to say in the 13th verse, seventh chapter, and one of the elders responded saying to me, who are these dressed in white robes and where did they come from? And I said, to him, Master, you know. And he said to me, These are those coming out of the great distress. Some versions will say tribulation, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Yashara, oh Yashara, expectations are rising. It's time for you to begin to discern what the Almighty Father is saying to you. Know all that is written require a response to identify set apart vibrations and sounds for this is stimuli. These are things that stir our spirit. It is the spirit of Yahuwah that works in us. Abba Father Yahuwah's spirit is working in us through us one towards another. Consider Proverbs 19:27 as it reads, Cease, my son, to hear discipline. And you shall stray from the words of knowledge. So if we turn off the vibrations and the sounds from the set apart, if we ignore them, it says we risk going astray from the words of knowledge that have been given us. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the entire matter. Fear the almighty one and guard his commandment for this applies to all mankind. Some people will take the scripture and say, well, if a person is talking, let them finish. Let us hear the entire story. My brothers and sisters, the first and foremost instruction from the Almighty Father is discern what he is saying. And he will guide us through. In some cases, he will show us the whole entire matter before a person can complete, complete describing the matter. Before a person can, can finish their story, the Spirit of Yahushua can show you for there are those who want to just kill time and give you excuses and waste your time and waste our time. We have no obligation to hear the entire matter from someone that is being led by the wicked one. We must discern what the spirit of Yahushua is saying to weigh the matter. And we will discover that in discernment, he can bring things to mind. He can bring the entire matter before our very eyes. Notice that it said, fear the almighty one and guard his commands for this applies to all mankind. So that's where it begins. Oh, Yashara. do not fall for someone throwing this verse at you to say, well, you got to let the person finish. No, we need to discern what the spirit of Yahushua is saying. If we got into a quid pro quo debate or conversation and say, well, I listen to you. So you got to listen to me. How wise do you think that is? There's no scripture that talks about quid pro quo. There's a scripture that say treat ones as we expect to be treated. Wouldn't you expect to be fed, set apart instructions? Wouldn't you expect set apart conversation? But if you're expecting wickedness and evil, then the fruit of such will come to visit you. Revelation 1, 3 says, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it for the time is near. Hear, my brothers and sisters, the vibrations, the sounds of the voice of the Almighty Father. 
Have we inclined our ear to hear? Revelation 2.29 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. Listen, O Yasharal, my brothers, my sisters. Keep in mind, end times demand actions. Be or get ready. We are given breath for a reason. We have received favor, supplies and resources and skills, instructions. Some have been chosen to lead. Some have been chosen to support. Some have been chosen to teach in various disciplines, from the caring of a child to the caring of a senior, to the growing of food, to the nurturing of one another, to the building up of the body of Yasharal. Actions, my brothers and sisters. I submit to you out of the discipline that comes from Hebrews 12, out of the discipline that comes as the Almighty Father, magnify the life in the passage regarding his discipline. We will find that we will be made ready and we will fulfill all that is written, O Yasharal. His plans will be magnified. There will be unity. Set apart, Yasharal, will be gathered. Consider these words, O Yasharal. Know that there is the literal and there is the spiritual. In case someone said that, oh, that was talking about events that had happened years ago. But I submit to you in these final days, my brothers and sisters, there will be a gathering. We will return to the promised land. We will return to the set apart mountain, that region where the Almighty Father gave Musha the Ten Commandments and more, where Yasharal experienced witnessing the Father at the top of Mount Sinai. So will we witness as we gather from the four corners of the earth. Let me read Ezekiel 39, 25 through 29. It reads as follows. Therefore, thus said the master Yahuwah, now I am going to bring back the captives of Yaakov and I shall have compassion on all the house of Yasharal and shall be jealous for my set apart name. And they shall have born. Uh, notice it says my set apart name. You see my brothers and sisters in this final Exodus, as we come together in unity, we will understand the name that the most high wants us to say. All these different variations of Yahushua Mashiach will change. All these variations of Yahuwah as the Almighty Father coming to us in Yahushua's name will be magnified where we will understand what name we are supposed to use. So whatever camp, fellowship, or community, it will not be vacillating saying the pagan name and saying well, what that is Hebrew name and going back and forth. There will be one name. And as extreme humbling times come during these end times, watch and pray. Witness the person who used the name that brings about the instructions that line up with scriptures, line upon line. Witness the individuals that are used by the Almighty Father and what name they're using as they instruct, as they demonstrate, and as they follow the guidance from the Almighty Father. And you will discover the name that is truly to be used. He goes on. Here in 26 to 29, and they shall have borne their shame in all their trespasses they committed against me. When they dwell safely in their own land with none to make them afraid. And when I brought them back from the peoples and gathered them out of the lands of their enemies, and I shall be set apart in them before the eyes of many nations. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah, their almighty one, who sent them into exile among the nations and then gathered them back to their own land and left none of them behind. You see, my brothers and sisters, some will say when I talk about dying for Yahushua's name as martyrs, some will think that this verse dispels when I say some will be ordered to shelter in place to help others as they migrate towards the promised land. Some will say, see, this makes him a lie. I say to you, my brothers and sisters, 
If you look at the widespread destruction that will come upon the face of the earth, those who will die for Yahushua's name, those who will be in communities and camps and different places that order to shelter and place so others can fuel up as they migrate towards the promised land. By the time the gathering have took place, most of the world would be uninhabitable. Widespread destruction is coming, my brothers and sisters. So it will be destroyed. So they won't be left there. At that time, when they say none of them behind, the world would have been destroyed. All those who are set apart at the given time of being gathered from the four corners of the earth will be, all those that are alive at that time will be gathered. And I think the last stragglers would be those in Jerusalem. And I am compelled to believe that the two witnesses of Revelation once Joshua has gathered from the four corners of the earth, they will go into Jerusalem and tell the stragglers, you're in the wrong place. You're anticipating and waiting Yahushua Mashiach's return, but you're in the wrong place. You need to be in the region where they have been gathered, gathered closer towards the set apart mountain of Yahuwah. And as they give those instructions, there will be the rebellious, Brothers and sisters will say, no, nah, I read the scriptures. I read it. And they say in Jerusalem or Jerusalem. But I submit to you, the final words of the two witnesses are words to the stragglers to join the rest of the camp and wait for Yahushua Mashiach. And upon, upon their death and them raising up in the streets of Jerusalem, when they raise up, we will witness the seventh trump, the last trump, and we will witness the presence of Yahushua Mashiach return before our very eyes. This is when those who gathered in Armageddon in Megiddo to march against the saints, this is when they will begin to march towards the camp of Yahuwah. And their march will not be to Jerusalem. Their march will be towards the region around the set apart, the set apart mountain of Yahuwah. But Yahushua Mashiach will return at that very moment. My brothers and sisters, there is so much of work to be done between now and then. Some of us will be alive and some of us will not. Make no mistake, there will be a gathering from the four corners of the earth. What's your position, O Yasharal? Keep in mind 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. Believe it or not, this is a passage most widely misunderstood and used. It says here, if I shut up the heavens and there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or I send pestilence among my people, and my people upon whom my name is called shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then I shall hear from the heavens and forgive their sin and heal their land. Our land is the promised land, my brothers and sisters. Some people have taken this passage and think that wherever land we went to, wherever we at, this is what it's talking about. And I submit to you, it is not. Though it is written, the earth is Yahuwah's in the fullness thereof. It is also written that he gave the promised land to his children and it described the borders of the promised land. And this is the land that will be healed. For in its discipline, we will learn to call upon its name. In its discipline, we will humble ourselves. In that final exodus, all that is required for us to witness the healing of the land, the promised land, will come to be. Yasharal, oh Yasharal, what are you hearing? What vibrations and sounds are coming to you? It's time to identify set apart vibrations. And sound. It's time to recognize the sound of the spiritual shofar as well as the physical shofar. The physical trumpet and the spiritual trumpet. It's time to recognize and identify what is expected. What say you, O Yasharal? Are you ready? Some are more ready than others. Witness the hand of the Almighty Father rise up before us, O Yasharal. 
And we will discover that there are plans, set apart plans that contribute towards our deliverance, that consist of relocation and lifestyle changes that will make known those included versus those left behind. And there's a reason, my brothers and sisters, and we do not have the license to grab one scripture and say, see, this scripture says all, oh, nobody left behind. What we are charged to do is discern what that verse is saying, what any verse is saying as it relates to the gathering in the final days of man as we know it. White Rose has a plan, and I present to you highlights. Highlights that talks about identifying proven leaders chosen by the spirit of Yahushua. Highlights that involves the development of an information and resource center, both virtual and physical, to build a team with diverse skill sets, mentoring the unskilled and unlearned, passing critical information that we are to guard and pass from generation to generation to acquire land in Virginia, which is in the Western hemisphere. And I believe is the exit point when the gatherings begin in mass numbers for those that are in other nations beside the Western hemisphere, there will be a gathering to the outermost borders of such countries for Yehuda. The tribe of Yehuda carries the scepter. In other words, Yehuda will lead in this gathering from the four corners of the earth. Pray and watch. A plan that identifies safe and support zones as we migrate, as we move intermittently, step by step, as we move towards the true Mount Sinai, which is currently known as Jabal al-Law, situated in the northwest quadrant of what is now called Saudi Arabia. The promised land, the borders will be released to the region that the Most High has for us. And this plan that White Rose contributes guidance and support for completing that journey, guidance for the set apart life, guidance as it relates to unity, guidance as it relates to waiting on Yahoo, the physical return of Yahushua Mashiach. Yasharal, or Yasharal, the plan that I have been given is not the be all, end all. It is not the only plan. It contributes to reflecting the fulfillment of what is promised by the Almighty Father. Pray and watch if you are so guided. Count the cost, O Yasharal. We have received much favor from the Almighty Father. Favor and skills and resources, favor and supplies, favor and many abilities. Are we using it? Are we using the talents given by the Almighty Father? Are we recognizing them? Are our leaders confirming the many different tasks for Yasharal? Or are they trying to lift themselves up? Or is it just about them? Or just about a special fruit, few? Yasharal, Yasharal, choose this day the side you will take. Choose this day which direction you will go. If I am presenting words of life, O Yasharal, subscribe and share. If you have difficulty in receiving these words, examine them thoroughly, ask questions, seek to discern, know how to act. Consider what you are given and know the purpose of whether it is resources, supply, skills, or wealth. What are you doing with what you have been graced with, given by the Almighty Father? What you, have you done? Some of you might say, oh, I went to school or I, I, I learned under this person. I worked hard to get where I'm at. But who is it that gave you breath, a heartbeat and a sound mind to achieve the things that you have come to achieve? Recognize what the favor of Yahuwah represents and for what purposes. The final days of man are ahead of us and the most valued and coveted things will be fresh water Food and a safe place. Until such, O Yasharal, what are you doing to contribute towards the building up of these final days? I've set up a cash app. If someone will prefer to contribute 
financially. White robes, family. My brothers and sisters. Move as you believe you are guided. The days will come when communication we will move from just entertaining one another or just talk. Our communications will be more focused on the building up of Yasharal. Watch as uncertainty magnify as people seek answers. Watch the answers that the Almighty Father present before us. Yasharal, O oh Yasharal. Vibrations and sounds. The trumpet, the shofar. What do you feel? What do you hear? What do you believe is set apart? What is stirring within your spirit? Have you, O Yasharal, identified the things that are necessary to do what is expected? With each passing day, my brothers and sisters, we will discover some amazing things. Some will respond quickly and some will get it later. My prayer, O Yasharal, is more than anything that we grow in discerning the voice of he who we cannot see except as he works through us in us one towards another, except as we witness his hand go before this planet. His promises the Almighty Father Yahuwah, his promises will be kept. The prophecies that are written will be fulfilled. On that note, I say to you, what do you hear? What's stirring in your spirit? What vibrations are reaching you? What actions do you think you should be taking? Examine all things, O Yasharal. But let us move away from compromising teachings, practices. Let us move away from the Illusion that we can have an excuse to not obey what the Almighty Father is saying. For there are tasks for you, for me, for us. The 144,000 in great multitude will begin to take shape as we witness the great awakening become magnified before our very eyes. On that note, O Yasharal, my prayers for your good health, your strength, and fortitude, your desire to hear what is set apart to hear and identify the voice of the almighty father spirit to move in obedience to his 10 commandments, his laws, his statutes, his living instructions. O Yasharal, I pray that you, that me, that we are growing stronger and we'll unite and meet one day. O Yasharal, O Yasharal, I say to you on that note, Shalom. Shalom, my brother, my sister, my family.